Vanessa, where are you? Answer now! Vanessa! Oh, hello. It's been a while. And why is that? Oh, I remember. Because you haven't messaged me for two whole goddamn months. Good grief, young lady. Huh? Don't give me huh. I don't need to hear attitude from you. Still, you see got no awareness of the fact that you're a wife of this household. No, but... When your mother-in-law kindly goes out of her way to message you, you put whatever you're doing aside and respond immediately. That's one of the rules you live by as my son's wife. If you understand, please be more mindful next time. Um... I am not done speaking yet. Quit your budding end and listen to what your mother-in-law has to say. Oh... Firstly, I recently saw a new apartment you two got together for the first time. The place you went to live after you moved out. Our new apartment? And my god! You haven't been doing the housework at all, have you? The room was filthy. There were clothes scattered all over the floor and tissues left tossed all over the place. You didn't even wash the pots and pans. I've never seen such a sorry state. How can you call that place a home? There were sweet wrappers and ready meal hamburger boxes overflowing out of the garbage all over the floor. Not to mention the mountain of empty beer cans on the table. My little Timmy doesn't drink alcohol, so they could only be yours. They were, weren't they? Admit it! No, I have allergies and come out in rashes when I drink alcohol. Be quiet, young lady. I did not give you permission to speak. Oh, sorry. To top it all off, the place was caked in dust. You haven't been vacuuming at all, have you? I only allowed you to continue working after you got married because you said you'd have no problem juggling your work with the housework. But if you're not capable of looking after your husband, I suggest you resign immediately so you can focus on your womanly duties. This is why women should be stay-at-home housewives once they married. Um, are you finished now? What? You appear to be making a lot of misconceptions, so allow me to correct you. Don't talk back to me, young lady. Me and Tim are already divorced. Yes, I'm aware of that. Huh? If you know, why are you throwing around words like mother-in-law and wife? Why wouldn't I? Come on, Vanessa. Please use your brain for once. Even if you're divorced, as long as you and my little Timmy are living together, you're still his wife, and you still have a role to fulfill in our family. It's your sacred duty and obligation to serve your husband with devotion and loyalty, and to display the proper respect towards me, your mother-in-law. Do you have any idea how little sense what you're saying makes? The fact that we're divorced already makes us strangers now. We stopped being a couple and started leading separate lives the moment the divorce was finalized. Which is why any notion that I have to look after or fulfill my womanly duties towards him are ridiculous, plain and simple. I already warned you, young lady. Don't talk back to your mother-in-law. I'm not talking back. I'm having a normal conversation. With you like a reasonable human being. Reasonable? Which part? Let me say it once more. I'll make it crystal clear this time to help you understand. Any woman who doesn't look after her husband is a failure of a wife. If you can't keep on top of the housework while working, then hurry up and quit your job already. 
How about I contact your company and tell them you've decided to step down to focus on being a housewife? <sighs> no, stop it! I don't think there's any danger of them taking a resignation declared by some stranger over the phone seriously. But I don't want to cause them any inconvenience. Then just quit now while you still have got some dignity left. Let's face it, after seeing how lazy you are at home, you're probably a burden to them too. I'm not a burden actually. I'm a high-valued employee and besides, if I want to quit, I wouldn't be able to make ends meet. Oh, don't talk such nonsense. Are you seriously saying that my little Timmy's salary alone isn't enough to keep you going? But I already told you, we're not living that kind of life together anymore. I think what you meant to say is that you're a shameful disappointment of a wife. Looking after the household by skillfully managing the finances is a wife's duty. But we already divorced, and I'm not his wife anymore. How many times do I have to say it? Lord, give me strength. Give it a rest, you're like a broken record. Just because you're divorced doesn't mean you can start neglecting the housework and living like swamp rats. Oh, my poor Timmy. In that case, you're wasting your time. I live in a different state now. What? My company offered me a transfer as soon as the divorce went through. So I took them up on it and moved out of the state. Good grief! A wife who goes off on solo business ventures away from her family? I've never heard anything so absurd in my life! Ugh, like I told you, I'm not your son's wife anymore, and you're not my family. Quit your job and come back immediately. Huh? That said, I may be firm, but I'm also kind, which is why I'm willing to grant you some leeway. Common sense dictates the resignation procedures usually take about a month, so I'm very kindly willing to give you 30 days to make the necessary arrangements and come back. I'll look after little Timmy in the meantime. So hurry up and quit your job and move back here so you can be by your side again. I told you, we're divorced. Quit talking nonsense! Now you're just arguing for argument's sake, young lady! Nonsense? You heard me! Hey, Tim, it's been a while. Is now a good time for you? Is that Vanessa? Hey! Yeah, long time no see! Sorry to message you despite us being divorced and all. That's cool. Don't sweat it. It's not like we divorced because we don't get along. Maybe things will change when one of us finds someone else, but for the time being, there's no reason we can't message each other. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks. Anyway, what's up? I want to speak to you about your mom. Huh? My mom? Ah, she's not causing problems again, is she? Darn it. Well, you could say she's causing problems. It's more that she doesn't listen to a word I say. It's like talking to a brick wall. What happened? Well, to sum it up, even if you are divorced, as long as you two live together, you're Tim's wife. And as long as you're his wife, you need to look after him. If you can't keep on top of the housework while working, then quit your job. That's basically the gist of it. Um, what the... What did you say to her? I told her that me and you are strangers since we divorced. And I keep insisting I'm not your wife anymore. So I have no obligation to do any of that. But she just keeps coming back at me with her favorite... I know you may be divorced, however... Yada yada yada. The conversation goes nowhere because she ignores everything I say on a fundamental level. I give up. Wow. I see she's just as stubborn and pig-headed as usual. 
Oh yeah, that reminds me. Just like always, she refers to you as her little Timmy. It's like you're an eight-year-old kid to her. I'm a grown man for crying out loud. Please, that's enough. This isn't good for my mental health. Oh, I'm sorry. Does this still upset you? Well, about that. As soon as our divorce went through, my dad also moved out. And now my parents are living separately. Wow, seriously? Ever since then, her over-interfering in my life reached levels previously unimaginable. It got so bad I couldn't take it anymore. I was so desperate to get away from her. I sneaked out of the house in the middle of the night a week ago so I could finally be free of her. I see. Sounds like it's been tough for you too, Tim. My mom was the reason we divorced in the first place, after all. I felt so guilty about you having to put up with her. I thought at least if we divorced, you'd be able to escape from it all. But even that didn't work, did it? It would seem I underestimated her. I'm fine, really. Don't worry about me. Actually, I got a transfer at the company. And I'm living far away in a different state now. There's no danger of her following me and causing me problems. In fact, she couldn't possibly. Oh, really? I'm pleased to hear that. More importantly, what about you, Tim? If anything, it sounds like things might be more difficult on your end. Me? Well, you see, your mom insisted she was gonna go over and start looking after you since I was failing to fulfill my womanly duties towards you what with working all the time. Which means she must know your current address? What? But I didn't tell her! Really? Based on the messages yesterday, I kind of got the impression she was already at your apartment. Is there a chance she found your new address somehow and sneaked in while you weren't home? No. I really don't think that's possible. You sure? I got a transfer at work the other day too. I'm staying at a company-provided dormitory right now. The rules state that non-employees aren't allowed to enter without permission under any circumstances, even visiting family members. It's a long way from Mom's house. I don't think she could make it this far out, even if she did know my address. I see. Huh. Yeah. It's a mystery. You can say that again. Well, whatever. It's not like she can actually do anything to me. You don't mind? I have absolutely no intention of going back to the family home. I don't even read her messages these days. To be honest, I was thinking of blocking her soon. She can do what she likes. It's not my problem anymore. After everything that went down, for the sake of my mental health, I resolved never to tolerate her shenanigans ever again. I see. <laughs> It's probably for the best you block her too, Vanessa. I may be her son, but you two are literally strangers now, so there's no reason you should have to put up with her irritating messages. You make a good point. I couldn't help but feel a little wary about what she was planning on doing next. But actually, after keeping an eye on her a little while longer just to be safe, I think I'm gonna block her. I think it's for the best. Anyway, I'm about to jump in the bath. Sure. Thanks for today, Tim. Night-night. Good night. Vanessa! Answer! What the hell is going on? You've got some explaining to do. Um, what do you mean? Some strange woman walked in. Well, I was cleaning little Timmy's room. She yelled, Who are you? What are you doing in my apartment? Before I could even figure out what was going on, some middle-aged guy bolted in. They started shouting like crazy lunatics and threatened to call the police. 
They were saying such awful things to me, Vanessa. It was horrible. I was so startled, I ran to the bathroom and locked myself in. What's going on? Explain. Oh, no you didn't. Goodness me. There's no way. You didn't by chance enter a complete stranger's house, did you? Huh? Where are you right now? In the apartment in Anderby Town. What? Oh my god. That's not the room in the tower block called Comfort Heights, is it? Tell me it isn't. Yes, it is. What of it? Room 202. I came to clean this filthy mess of a room for my little Timmy since you were too busy playing the important office lady to fulfill your womanly duties. You and little Timmy are living together here, right? Why do you think that? Because there were two sets of plates and cutlery. But then this happened. I have no idea what's going on. Listen, Judy, that apartment you're in right now belonged to my aunt, who let me stay with her for about ten days after me and Tim finished with the divorce proceedings. Wait, what? Your aunt? However, my aunt moved out a month ago. Based on what you're telling me, it seems like some new people moved in. But that doesn't make any sense! I found this address in my little Timmy's room! It was written in a notepad I found on his desk. He probably wrote it down when I told him where I was staying. Huh? I had a lot of stuff when I moved out, but I didn't want to hang around and get in his way for too long, so... He said if I forgot anything, he'd send it later on in the post. Which is why I told him I'd be staying at my aunt's till the end of the month. And sent him her address. He probably just forgot to toss his old notepad in the trash. How could this be? I thought he wrote down his new address for me so I could come and see him. Oh my god. The only reason I didn't try following him when he disappeared in the night is because I thought knowing his address, I could go and see him whenever I wanted. If this isn't his apartment, where's my little Timmy right now? <sighs> Tell me now! Nope, sorry. I don't even know myself. I know you're lying. What kind of wife doesn't know where her husband lives? That just doesn't happen. Like I said, me and your son are no longer married. And like I said, even if you are divorced... Wanna know the reason why we got divorced, Judy? Because of you! What? Me? Tim hates how you meddle in his life all the time. He told me you've been babying him and interfering with basically everything he ever does since he was a teenager. Then, when we married, you started acting like some kind of dictator trying to turn me into his personal slave. I was to cater to his every whim at all times regardless of what I wanted. He blamed himself and his mental health took a turn for the worst. He stopped eating. He could barely sleep. He became a shell of his old self because of what you were putting me through. Huh. After a long, difficult decision, me and him decided that a divorce would be the best way to reduce the burden on both of us. So that's where we are now. Oh my god! I just wanted my cherished, beloved Timmy to be happy. Is that a crime? He's the one who said he hates you interfering. You drove your son to the emotional and psychological brink with your psychotic behavior. Does that sound like happiness to you? Oh my god. What is this? I didn't even... Anyway, is everything alright? What do you mean? I seem to remember you saying something about being locked in a stranger's bathroom. This is bad. I can hear police cars outside. That tends to happen when you illegally enter strangers' homes. Firstly, 
As for how my ex-mother-in-law managed to get into a stranger's apartment, it turned out the couple who were living in there forgot to lock the door when they both went out for work. So she was able to creep in unnoticed. She found a key they left out on the table and took it upon herself to have a copy made at a local locksmith. She returned to the empty apartment for several consecutive days while its inhabitants worked, where she continued diligently looking after her son. Eventually, she ran into the poor unsuspecting couple one day as they came back from work. Naturally, she caused the police a major nuisance when they were swiftly dispatched to deal with a strange woman hiding in our bathroom. The incident ultimately ended up being the straw that broke the camel's back, when my ex-father-in-law, from whom she had been living separately, finally divorced her. Apparently, she broke down into tears screaming, I don't want to be alone! Not even knowing where her beloved little Timmy had moved away to. Her own parents were no longer around, and she didn't have a soul in the world to rely on. Thus began her life alone. Now I'm living happily in an apartment my company provided for me when I transferred. I did get one last message before I blocked her. Bemoaning how she cries herself to sleep every night because of me. Oh well. Bert, we need to talk. To talk? Can you make it quick? The next race is about to begin. What do you want? You know I'm in a bad mood unless I'm doing what I want to do. If you have something to say, say it. As you can tell, I'm really busy. It's been six months since your mother has passed away, and Sage is now working and on her own. I think it's about time for me to be free as well. What nonsense. You want to be free? Even now you're living however you please. Do you really think so? I want to be free of you. Your jobs never last. When I ask you to find a new job, you fabricate an illness and stay in bed. Yet you are never too sick for gambling, drinking, or having your own fun. I even took you to the hospital for a checkup, but the doctor said you were in perfect health. How am I supposed to know? That doctor is probably a fake. You know my health issues are psychological. It's fatal, so there's no cure. I stayed with you up to now because your mother was very nice to me. And when I considered our daughter Sage, I thought divorce was not the answer. But I've had enough. I don't have any feelings towards you. None at all. So please, divorce me. Are you leaving me? I'm not working, and at this age, who'd hire me? If you abandon me, you're leaving me to the wolves. And if I die, it will be your fault. Stop with the sob story already. You don't know how hard I've been working while hoping you would change one day. But you'll never change. I'm sorry I had such high expectations. I can't be held responsible for your expectations. Anyways, I'm not worried. There's no way you'd leave me. I've decided. I'll file for the divorce. I'm serious. Fine, fine, whatever. The race is about to begin. See ya. Where are you? Mom passed out. They've taken her to the hospital. Oh, it's you, Sage. How have you been? What are you saying? How can you ask me how I am? Mom passed out. Don't you care? There's no way Mom would pass out. I know you're lying. She's as healthy as a horse. She was overdoing it. They said she worked herself to the bone. It's all your fault. What are you talking about? How could it be my fault? How? It's all your fault. You care more about your own fun than working. You gamble away Mom's hard-earned money at the horse races. You complain she doesn't give you enough money. You hardly ever come home. Mom had to take care of Grandma and the house all by herself. I had to work, so I could only help her on the weekends. So that's why you think it's my fault? Then it's your fault as well as you left home. 
I left home as I couldn't bear to spend any more time in the same space as you. Unlike you, I work hard and take care of myself without depending on anyone else. You go out and leave mom with all the responsibilities. I can't help it if I can't work. I'm sick, you know. Do you want to kill me? What? You aren't sick. You don't work because you don't feel like it. Anyhow, Mom has been admitted to the hospital. She'll be here for some time. Really? Well, how long will she be in the hospital? And who's going to take care of my meals while she's in the hospital? All you're worried about is your meals? I can't believe it. The doctors told me Mom has cancer. Cancer? <laughs> like a dancer? <laughs> Just joking. She's overworked, and she has cancer. Well, that's deep. What's funny about that? It's not at all funny. Oh, that's what this is about. What? This is her plan. She's using this to divorce me. She's saying she's sick so she doesn't have to come home. She thinks this way I'll agree to the divorce. Are you out of your mind? Mom's illness and the divorce are unrelated. It's okay, you don't need to pretend. Sorry to drag you into our mess, Sage. You're a good daughter, looking out for Mom. She just wants me to pay her more attention. We're bound for life, she can never leave me. I know she's still madly in love with me. You're living in your own fantasy world. I give up. I'll take care of Mom on my own. I won't let you take advantage of her anymore. Mom and I have known each other for a really long time. I know her better than anyone else. Tell Mom to arrange something for my meals. Hey Sage, I can't get in touch with Mom. Do you know anything? Tell her to transfer some money into my bank account. I haven't had a decent meal in ages. She hasn't been home, so my life's a mess. I'm on my way to the funeral. I don't have time to deal with the likes of you. What? Funeral? Whose? Mom's. Remember when I told you she had cancer? When the doctors discovered it, it was already too late. Her cancer was terminal. She had terminal cancer? No one told me anything. I told you she had cancer. You're the one who chose not to believe it. You weren't concerned about Mom working too much or being sick. I didn't want someone like that to bother Mom's remaining life. That's why I didn't say anything further. I don't know what to believe. What's going to happen to me? How am I expected to live? You aren't a kid. You should be able to take care of yourself. I'm the one who can't believe what's going on in your head. Rather than being sad Mom's passed away, you're worried about yourself? But as the funeral hasn't begun yet, I guess I can let you know where it will take place. Personally, I don't want to see you there. But if you have any remorse or appreciation for Mom, I guess this will be your last chance to tell her. She's really dead? Not Mom making you lie for her. It's the truth. Don't make me repeat myself so many times. It's true. So that means all of Mom's possessions, her money and all are mine. Do you know when I'll get them? Unbelievable. After all that I've said, is money the only thing you care about? You really are the worst. It's important. Oh, I'm so relieved. All's well that ends well, right? I thought I was going to end up on the streets and die alone. That may still happen. What do you mean? Why do you presume all of Mom's money will go to you? I haven't forgotten all the pain you've caused her through the years. I'm her husband. I'm sure there's some law that says I'll inherit her assets. Not a single penny from Mom's assets will fall into your hands. It's all been donated. Mom left me a portion, as a gift for when I get married. But the rest of the money? It's all gone. You must be lying. Why'd she do that? What do you mean, donated? Who gets the money? She obviously didn't want you to have any of her money. She gave it to someone who needed it to pay for their medical treatment. Mom was such a generous person, even until the end. Unlike you, who only thinks about himself. Wake up and realize Mom has washed her hands of you. 
You little brat. What about the inheritance from my mother? She was managing it. It was my mother's. So it's only logical that I should receive it. Oh, about that. Grandma left everything to Mom. What? You know Grandma was apologizing to Mom until the day she passed away. Grandma was so sorry about how she raised you and how much trouble you had caused Mom. That's why she left Mom the money. She wanted Mom to use it for herself. She arranged it with her lawyer so Mom would inherit it all without any problems. And the inheritance from Grandma has been donated due to Mom's passing. It's a lie. Why would she... Face it. Both Grandma and Mom were sick of you. They gave up on you. Even I hate to think of you as my dad. Listen, Sage. You received some money from Mom, right? How about sharing a portion of it with Dad? If it's a wedding gift, it should be a sizable amount. Dad has no other means to survive. Why would I give you the money Mom didn't want you to have? Plus... I would rather die than have you waste any more of Mom's money. In that case, why don't you move back in with your old man? The house is in my name, so there's no issues. I won't even charge you rent. It's a win-win for you, right? It's a lose-lose. You're planning on mooching off of me next? You don't need to come to the funeral. Don't contact me ever again. Sage... I'm all that's left of your family. It makes no difference to me whether you're alive or dead. I don't have the time to deal with the likes of you. I'm really busy. As far as I'm concerned, I don't have a family anymore. After all of that, Dad continued living at home as the house was in his name. I don't know how he managed the utilities bill. Regardless... Within a few months, he disappeared without a trace. When I entered the house using my mother's key, I saw he had sold many household items to support himself. I went through and cleaned up my mother's possessions and vowed never to return to that house. After mom found out her cancer was terminal, she used medicine to dull the pain and for the remainder of her life did all the things she wanted to do. It was only one month, but she watched Broadway shows and ate in Chinatown. After a long time, I saw she was truly enjoying herself, even laughing out loud. If I had known her fate, I would have forced her to leave that house sooner. I'm filled with regret. But I cannot forget if Mom hadn't met Dad, I wouldn't have been born. Mom told me how happy she was to spend time with me before she passed. She truly was wasted on my dad. A lot of people attended her funeral. She will be missed by many people. The sick person mom donated her money to. He came to visit me once he got better to thank me. He promised to honor mom's donation by living for both himself and mom. Whenever I think about how mom even saved someone's life, I become misty-eyed. After some time... The one person who kept torturing my mother, yes, my father, came to visit me. He said he had become ill and asked me to give him money for his treatment. Of course, I refused and said I no longer had a father. Perhaps my kind mother would have given him some money. The thought did cross my mind, but mom chose not to leave him any money. I know it was intentional so I'm sure mom would have turned him away as well.